everyone welcome to the studio again today so I am going to try a waterfall pour again you may have just seen a video that came out with some um, I think I used some semi-gloss paint in it to make the clouds that didn't work so well so I'm going to try it again today with just white acrylic and a little thicker layers between um, each color so we'll we'll see how that works I'm also trying a new camera angle today so let me know what you think let me know if you hate that new camera angle or you love it um, give me some feedback thanks okay, so today I'm going to use a 16 by 20 canvas and as always preparing the back by spraying it to keep it tight tape on the sides to avoid the run over and I leave the tape on till I'm done uh, deciding if I'm going to seal it with resin or not and then push pins. I have discovered that I love these jumbo push pins much better than the giant ones, much better than the small ones, and much better than the table pyramids. Um, they stay in nicely, don't come out when I don't want them to, so that's nice. All right, so I'm going to put on the back ground first just a craft white. In, um, it's a little runnier than I would normally use in a layer. And I did find these cool little pictures at the dollar store. See, they have a little lid on them. I do like to actually open them to be able to use them, though. They pour out just like a cup. So let me get on my gloves, and we're going to get started pouring the background and stacking the cup. All right, I'm getting ready to stack my cups. And I have um, here Art Deco Sapphire. This is a, oh, let's see, this one is a folk art garnet. This one is a folk art, I forget the name, but it's a light blue. This is just a basic craft white we're going to add between layers. This is a Nicole's Craft Studio copper. So let's get started. <music> So this is a waterfall pour, so it's almost a straight pour. I'm going to pour starting in the middle, moving this way a little bit, and then, or actually moving back a little bit, and then moving forward. That's going to produce those clouds at the end, kind of at this this section. So I'm a, usually a right-handed pourer, but because of the angle of the camera, I'm going to start right over here. Sorry about the shadows. I'm not adjusting my so. Let us begin.
may need a different camera angle for that pour out. I'm just trying that out. Now, I do like to take something and control that last little swirl. I'm not sure I like that because this is going to get larger. And we just want to make sure it's something that you can live with. If you like it, then all good. Now, there's a lot of bubbles I see, so let's pop those. No silicone. All these paints are metallic except for the white. But I do want to pop those bubbles. I do have kind of a cool art studio today. I have my air conditioner on, so I don't know. That may have an effect on how things are going to dry. It's always interesting with the change in the weather and things like that, how things turn out. Now, I love this feather look here. I hope I can preserve that. I have a little bit more of it here. These are going to be interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right, I think we've got a good bit of the bubbles. There's going to be more of them that come up as we stretch it. I'm going to give it just a minute to rest because I do see so many of them. And then we'll tilt it. And so I'm going to get started by moving it this way. I do want to keep this, so I'm going to go to this corner first. Go over the side only a little bit if I can. Let's get it loose enough to move it around here. Now I do have a little sign underneath there. Do you see that? I'm hoping to pour off on a little bit. I have two paintings I'm doing with the exact same colors today. So I'm trying these colors in a waterfall pour and then in a new video I'm going to do it in a tree ring pour. I'm trying to gently get down there, not lose my feathers. And to do that, I'm going to have to pull some over the side. Ha! Huh. I lost them. Oh well, that's all right. Let's come back this way a little bit. Stretch that part. The center is so fabulous. I'm glad I swirled that. We're coming up. We're going to bring our weight down here and come over this side. And then straight up. My weight is right here, so it should carry down to this side just like I want it to. I want to come back this way a little bit. I just totally lost that. And I just stuck my hand in there, so let's go this way. Get rid of the hand mark. Oh, wow. And I am going to stretch it up this way again. Just to move it toward that corner. Make that swirl get a little bit bigger. Wow. I think I like this one. I like how the white came out in the middle. That doesn't always happen so wonderfully. So what do you think about that? And I'm sorry if my head's in the way. I'm trying a new camera angle, so we'll see. All right, so I'm going to clean off my gloves, bring you in a little closer so you can see 
some of the effects. All right, I thought I'd bring you in closer so you could see the finished painting. I'm glad I swirled the middle a little bit more. Just one lesson to learn is that whatever you have poured out last is going to be stretched out in the middle. So try to perfect that last little swirl. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. Mm -hmm.